This is BBC London 94.9. You're listening to Joe Good. Weekday afternoons from three. X Factor, fine. Oh, no, was it Britain's Got Talent? Hang on, Britain's Got Talent or X Factor? Uh, Joe McEldry. How oh, bad of me to forget that. X Factor, thank you. X Factor finalist Joe McEldry is going to be talking to us very soon about his, uh, actually he's adorable, um, about his latest project. So that's still coming up. Amen Corner and If Paradise Was Half As Nice. It's almost time for the four o'clock news. On the other side of that, we're going to be talking to, do you remember him? I bet you do. X Factor winner Joe McEldry, who is about, well, he's not actually. It's an, oh gosh, am I the first presenter probably on the BBC to mention Panto? <gasps> Yes, it's uh, well, it's not that time of year, but they, it is that time of year because at the moment they have gathered all their celebrities for every poster, um, and that's why you always see celebrities with a tan on the poster at Christmas. They're all gathered to um, have their yeah their programmes done and their photographs done for the big. PR job as we head towards Christmas. Joe McEldry is going to be appearing in Cinderella here in London, and. There at the Hayes Theatre, where he's actually going to be performing, can you believe they are almost fully booked up? The fact that he's in it with Shane Ritchie, who listens to this radio show, I'm really pleased to say. Um, yes, they're almost sold out. I'm sure there must be a couple of performances left, and it's only the summer. Well, it's September, extended summer, isn't it? Anyway, Joe McEldry, who is truly gorgeous, is going to be talking to me about his very first panto uh, after the news with Anna. Before that, let's catch up with the travel. I'm Billy. Also, in a few moments' time, the gorgeous Joe McEldry. He was a joy to interview. Um, on his way back from his photo call for Panto at Hayes, his very first Panto, Cinderella, was Shane Ritchie. Now, um, I always think it's very funny when you look at a, a, a pantomime poster and everybody shining out his top of the bill has got a lovely tan because the reason being, it's that this time of year they're doing all their pre-publicity and that's how we've managed to grab the gorgeous Joe McEldry, X Factor winner, onto the show. Hello, Joe. Hello, how are you? I'm very well. I mean, you look so handsome anyway. Oh, thank you. In life. And you were saying that you've just been wearing sort of a frock coat and shirt and prancing around the theatre. Yes, I was in Prince Charming this morning um we're in the the full regalia <laughs> which was fun I, I think i'm gonna have to get a little bit used to it though because it's quite it's quite heavy yes and i'm used to i'm very when i'm on stage and i'm doing my shows i mean i'm on tour at the minute and i wear very loose fitting like like things that i can dance and move yes. around this is like armor Yes. It's like, yeah, it's full on. No, it will be. And it's all it's almost pageantry, isn't it? Yes. What, you, what Prince Charming wears. Um, we must say, this is on at the Beck in Hay, so we'll give all the details in a moment. But Cinderella has to be, I think, and I was boasting to you, because I've done 18 pantos. Um, there are two things you have to watch out for. Your complexion goes crazy, because well, you're wearing so much stage makeup, yeah. and also you eat rubbish. Because I don't know whether you're going to be doing two shows a day, are I, you? Yeah, I think it's about 12 shows a week. It's a 12 show. What you'll do is go and eat all the babes' food. All the babes, the children, have all the food in their dressing rooms. And See, I need to get all the tips off oh, no. you now. All the principals are going, got any chocolate? And the kids go, yes, I'll give you a Malteser. And then in the end, your skin goes crazy because you're just eating anything. But I imagine you're burning off so much energy. It's just... You do. everyone, shoveling everyone, in. You, absolutely. Everyone gets flu, like, the first week in. Everyone gets flu. Then everyone loses their voice. So, yeah, so you're all sort of... There's cough sweets all over the set. Yeah. Um, and steaming in the, in the dressing room. And then, and then you settle down, and you have. I mean, seriously, Joe, you're going to have such a good time. Yeah. I mean, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to it. And to be honest with you, they've asked us to do one every year since I did X Factor. And normally, the pattern for me for the past four and a half years is to be release an album September time, go right up till the Christmas with the promo, all of that kind of stuff. So this year, the album's not going to be out until next year. So we kind of left a gap, and in, in February I said to the management, I was like, right, I have to do one this year. Please, can we make it happen? Because ever since being like five, I've been obsessed with the glitz and the costumes and the funniness of a panto. And um, I just want to do it. I want to take it off the list. I want to, it's something fun. It's a, it allows people, I think, to see me in a less serious light, you know. Sometimes when I'm doing like TV interviews for albums and things, it gets a bit, you know, 
it's it's the serious side of yes. music, I suppose. Yes. And this is just fun. I'm just going to have fun with it. Yes, and you will do. And what will happen is you'll become addicted because even Paul O'Grady, who's done hundreds, literally hundreds, I can remember when he said no more, and I think he missed one year, and then he went, oh, what am I doing? Just sitting at home. I want to go out and do another panto. Yeah. Um, and, I, you know, it's the highlight of his year, to be quite honest, and it'll probably get like that with you, that you just think, I've got to go and do it, because... The other thing about Panto is you become like this family because you're spending so much time yeah. in this building together. Yeah. They bec you become real... It's like Big Brother, really, doing two shows a day. Yeah, and I think as well, like, for me, you know, I, when I go on stage, I have me band, and that's like a little family. But I did, a, I did Tommy the Rock Opera last year, just a one-night thing in London, and I've felt nothing like it before, like being part of such a huge cast, and I loved it. Wow. And um, it's so different. You feel... Uh, Sometimes I think, especially in 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 my like I'm saying my job like it's two separate jobs, but in in oh, pop singer job, yeah, of course it like is. I, I feel like sometimes you know like it's all it's all eyes on me, and if anything goes wrong, I have to take the yes. I take the flag for it yes. because I'm the person that takes it. Um, I think with when you're with a cast, you kind of feel a bit more protected, and you can kind of have a bit more fun, I suppose. Do you know you've explained it beautifully? Because if anything goes wrong, it only makes it better you in can, Panto. You can if the set it. falls down, if anything goes wrong, <laughs> and I think you've pointed out one of the stresses of your job, actually, as being a solo performer, is it, it does all rest on you. It rests on your health, yes. on your energy, and yeah. your friendliness really because it comes from the top all of that doesn't it yeah well i, I made it i made a joke I, <laughs> i'm on the road at the minute and on friday night was somewhere and i made a joke about something about having a sore throat or something like that and i said and unfortunately i don't have any sick cover you know i can't send anybody to uh, to cover me sick because i think you, there would be a lot of complaints but it's true you know it is quite and i'm used to that that sense of things is like I, when i'm on tour or when i'm doing a lot of shows together or album promotion you just have to nurse yourself through it like lem sips everything because that that's the thing if the voice goes like you know i i, I explain it like if somebody has a headache and they work in a shop or something you can kind of keep but going if, yeah but if my voice goes i can't and and I, I get really frustrated if it goes out it's really annoying um dan my producer sitting behind knows where this is going because i keep going when all these um, singers i interview say i'm so worried about my voice there's a steam have you used the yes. steam steam is the, the china steam china great. steamer they <laughs> But isn't it? It's great. It's, it's great. It's simple and it's so effective. It works. Um, it's interesting, Joe, that there have been lots of um, winners from reality series and they come and go and you're still there and um, and your, you know, your fans are still as strong as ever and your popularity is as strong as ever. What is that? Is that because you're very focused on your career and you don't get distracted? I am... I mean, you know, I, I, I'm not going to sit here and, and, and say, like, that there hasn't been hurdles. I've had some big hurdles thrown. You know, I parted ways with Cycle, the first label, and then I was very fortunate enough to, to be invited, really, to be asked to go on Popstar Opera Star by ITV and, 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 and did that show, and that worked really well. Um, and I think... That I'm was not... when I first well, that was yeah, when that I was first just met you. With the classic and album. I'm sorry to butt in, but I mean that for everybody proves the power of your voice because y y you know you can't cheat, can you? In that, not at it all. was it was there, and unless you had the strength of voice to go, to to succeed in the way you did, you'd never have got to the oh, end of that. That was, was just. A... And I remember you saying to me, it made your voice even stronger. Doing like that. I learned so much. I learned so much, and. And it was a risk to do, really, because if I had have gone on there and it had have been really bad, it would have mm. been pretty embarrassing because there was already an expectation from X Factor and from kind of people had seen us before on TV. But um, I think the thing with me is I'm not frightened to try things and I'm not frightened to get a bit of criticism for it. Do you know what I mean? I'll take it and I can take it and... And I'll just be like, all right, whatever. Well, yeah, as long as as long as I do a good job at something, and as long as people enjoy it, that's all I'm happy about. Did you, um, from X Factor, did you have an agent and or management? Did they? Did, so, so did you have to? Well, obviously, you didn't have to find them. They would have come to you. But have you stuck with? Because someone's guiding you well, or are you making all these decisions yourself? I'm not with the management company I was with when I first went on X Factor. Um, I am um, with I uh, changed management a couple of months back, actually, but. I've always been very... I've always wanted to be very involved in the decisions. There's some artists that, let it, like, don't really know what's going on. They don't really... See, like, I like to see everything. I like to see what's coming in, what I'm doing. I like to be involved in all of the processes. And 
it is quite difficult because obviously I'm. Uh, it's hard to detach yourself from that and then go on stage and be the performer. Yes. But I don't know. I just like the. I like to be involved, yes. you know, and I like to... I and like to have them. control, because there are awful things happen when you don't, yes, you know. exactly. Yeah. You can trust people, but you re never really know what's happening unless yeah, you can see it in front true. of you. Uh, right, let's just give everyone the details of this, because um, uh, Joe McEldry, obviously, top of the bill, but Shane Ritchie is also in it, and I think he's probably done loads of pantos, hasn't he? Yes. There's buttons, I think. Uh, what's he playing this time? Yes, buttons. He's buttons. playing buttons. I'm yes. sure he's given his buttons before. Um, and you are Prince Charming. Yes. And will you have an equerry? I've always... I love that word, equerry. Will you have an equerry? It's, it's, the, it's like the... Um, it's the manservant to, oh, to Prince Charming who follows you around and holds everything. You probably will it do. It would be nice. It'll be a member we'll of the chorus. We'll have real ponies. Oh. We'll have little ponies. This is a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever? I mean, this is a because the best bit of Cinderella is the transformation scene. Yes. When the ponies and everything emerge and she goes off in the and often their bowels open right on, on the, the stage. scene change on stage. Yes. Well, I've been with them this morning to do some photographs Fantastic. and they are here. One of them we've I've really bonded with. We've made really good friends. I think we're going to have a bit of a connection. And the other one was having none of it. Was like, wouldn't stand still, was trying to get out the harness. And I thought, I'm going to be staying away from you on that. But luckily, yes. I don't actually have to control them at any point. I'm just like... But they're stood there. Joe, I did Cinderella in Bogner. <laughs> this is when I was re my career was really on the way down. And... Um, and they put the ponies, they were kept in the car park, but one of them had mange. And I had, for the first time in my life, number one dressing room. And they brought the pony in to share my dressing room so that its mange wouldn't get any worse and tied it to my sink. Wow. So I'm hoping that that's, won't happen that's, to that's, you. That's, 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 a, uh, that's a strange rider, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Must have the pony tied in to In the myself. dressing room tied to the sink. Um, right. The Beck Theatre in Hayes, you can see the wonderful Joe McEldry. And the thing is, if you have a cast like this, it will sell out because it's also a catchment area for all the way around the M25. So you need to book. Yes. Um, it runs from the 14th of December to the 5th of January. Oh, good Lord. As I turn the page, I look at your timetable. Ah, uh, no. How it's, many shows? It's good. I, I, I think, well, there's 12 a week, and I think it runs for about three three to four weeks. So there you go. You're going to have to drink the old mass, vitamin but... C. <laughs> drink the old vitamin C back. Right, you can book online now, which is becktheatre.org.uk. Book online now. Or you can call the box office 0208 561 8371. 0208 561. 561-8371 to see Cinderella starring the wonderful Joe McEldry and Shane Ritchie. Come in if you have time during the run and chat. I'd love to. <laughs> I'd love to. That would be really fun. I'll probably be about, be about three stone light now with you a spotty face. With a spotty face. With hands full of chocolate. Yes, <laughs> covered in pony poo. Yes. Oh, Joe, listen, have a fantastic time. Thank you. Thanks for having us.